Crime fighting clinics. Okay. My first step was moving 16 to the other side of the equation as it is not part of any completing the square equation here. Then I divided everything by 4 in order to get x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 6y is equal to negative 4. Then I grouped the same coefficients together. So I grouped the x's together and the y's together and then completed the squared. That's how I got the 4 and the 9 from. And then I moved the 4 and the 9 to the other side of the equation in order to get the correct number and simplified them into their whole squared forms. So I did. I got a minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 4 plus 4 plus 9 from completing the square earlier. If I add the right side of the equation together, I'll get 13 minus 4, which is just 9. So my final equation should be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 whole squared is equal to 9. So this is what the graph of the equation would look like. The center would be right here at 2, 3, because if we're given that in equation 2 and 3, and then, in order to figure out the distances, it's a circle, right? So this would be the radius. So 9 is actually equal to radius squared. So in order to figure out how long the radius is, we must do root of 9, which is just equal to 3. So the points would be 1, 2, 3. So that would be negative 1, 3. And then moving up here, this would be 1, 1, 2, 3. So that would be 2, 6. And then from here, it would be 1, 2, 3. So this would be 5, 5, 3. And then down here would be another three. One, two, three. So that would be two, zero. And that's how you would graph this problem. So this is the second test. And what the equation that we have here is a parabola. And we know it's a parabola because um, one of the variables is squared. And in this case, it's the y variable. And so first things first is that we should turn the y squared plus 6y into a perfect square. The perfect square. And the perfect square would be y squared plus 6y plus 9. Now we fill out the rest of the equation. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So in this case, we add 9 to the right side of the equation. Now we can simplify this perfect square. And we can add 15 to each side to get rid of the 15 here and move it to this side. And 15 plus 9 is 24. Now we can distribute the negative 12 from the right side. And we get negative 12 times x minus 2 is equal to y plus 3 squared. And there you have it, the graphing form. So this is the parabola that we just solved in it's on a graph. And first of all, the center is 2, negative 3, because it's the opposite of what you can see in the equation. And that's what it right here. And then the p-value is 3, and the p-value stands for the distance between the vertex and the vertex, and the, vertex and the focus. And the p-value is 3 because negative 12 should equal negative 4p. And to solve that, we get p, p is equal to 3. Now the distance between the um, center and the directrix should be 3. So basically, that means the directrix is x equal to 5, which is this blue line here. And then you have the focus, which is negative 1, negative 3. And the distance between the focus and the center, once again, is 3. And the reason we know that it is um, what across the, uh, the y-axis and it goes towards the left is because, first of all, the y is squared. And secondly, this value um, is negative. And so finally, we have the x-intercepts and y-intercepts, which can be found if we plug in zero, 0 into y and solve and plug in 0 into x and solve. And those are uh, 5 fourths and 0, which is located right here. And the y-intercept is 0, plus or minus square root of 24 minus 3, which is located here in here. Good job, Mark. Aha, uh -huh, another test. To get past this one, I must need to convert. I must need to convert this general equation into the graphing into the graphing slash standard form equation of a hyperbola. I can tell it's a hyperbola because the the, the x is negative but the y is positive. The first thing I'm, I'm going to do this is subtract the 19 from both sides to get negative x squared plus 4y squared minus 2x minus 24y equals negative 19. Then what I need to do is complete the square. So I so I undistribute so I undistribute this x and get negative x squared plus 2x plus 4y squared minus 6y equals negative 19. And then to complete the square, I divide these coefficients by 2, which gives me a 1 here. And then I square this and put that there, so this is plus 1. And here, this gives me a negative 3. So I square this and put a 9 here, plus 9 here. And then I need to, and then I also need to add these to this side, to this side. But since there are coefficients on the parentheses, I have to multiply this 9 by this 4 to get plus 36. And I have to multiply this 1 by this negative. So that's a minus 1. So then that gives us negative x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 4y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 16. Equals 16. And then we convert these into, and then we convert these into a variable 
And then we simplify these, or factor these. So we, so over here we get negative x plus one squared plus, and over here we get four y squared, y not squared. We get four y, we get four times y minus three squared equals 16. And then the last thing we need to do is divide both sides by 16. And since this 16 and this 4 cancel out, to put a 4 on the bottom, our final equation is negative x plus 1 squared over 16 plus y minus 3 squared over 4 equals 1. I've now inputted the equation into the graph. As you can see, the center of the equation is here at negative 1, 3. We got this from, from hk with, from, from HK with this, this plus 1 equating to a negative 1 and this minus 3 equating to a plus 3. Then for the, then for the horizontal vertex, um, we, we can take the square root of the 16 to figure out its length, which is a 4. So the, so the vertices are, so there are vertices at negative 1, negative 5, 3, and 3, 3. And then we can do the same thing over here with this 4, and the square root of that is a 2. So there's also vertices here at negative 1, 1, and negative 1, 5. So this, which allows us to draw the square, um, then with the square we can, we can draw these asymptotes from corner to corner, which show us the, bound, the boundaries of our of our hyperbola, and as you can see the, the equation of the asymptotes, for this one it is, for this one it is um, y equals one half x plus 3.5, and for this one it is, and for this one it is also y equals negative one half, I think I'm going to calculate the asymptotes wrong. Yeah. So this is the fourth test, and for this we're going to be converting an ellipse from general form to graphing form. And we can tell it's an ellipse because the sign on the A and C terms are both positive. So the first step is to move 140 to the other side, and we end up with 4x squared plus y squared minus 48y equals negative 140. And then you complete the square here for the y term, and you get 4x squared plus y squared minus 48y, half of 48 is 24, squared is 576, equals, and you have to add 576 to this side as well, so you get 436. And then you factor this, and you get 4x squared plus y minus 24 squared equals 436. Divide both, and 436 divided by 4 is going to be 109. And then y minus 24 squared over 436 equals 1. So this is the graph of the equation we determined earlier. The center is at 0, 24, and the, uh, it, it extends um, the, by the square root of 436 uh, out from the center up and down along the uh, y-axis, which means that it'll never touch the x-axis. And the covertices extend 10.44, which is square root of 109, out uh, from the center along the x-axis. And the foci are uh, along the y-axis at 24 plus or minus 18.0831. Okay, so here we have test five for finding eccentricity. We took this equation, which is uh, an ellipse, and simplified it to graphic form. And now here we can find a both a and c values. So a squared is equal to 49, which makes a equal to 7. Then c squared is equal to 16, which makes both b equal so now what we're going to do is we're going to find what c equals. Now for an ellipse, we see that it's a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to take 49, subtract that from, subtract 16 from 49 to get c squared. 49 minus 16 equals 33. Square that, we get square root 33 is equal to c, is equal to c. Now for eccentricity, it's always c over a. So now that we have our a and c values, the eccentricity of this equation is 33 over 7. Okay, so this is the sixth test. And for this test, we have to find out what type of conic this is from these two fixed points. And to solve this kind of equation, we need to use the distance formula. What we want to do is plug in the points. And then once we plug in the points, we put the first fixed point into the first equation and the next fixed point into the second equation. But since it's a three times its distance, we put a three in front of it. And then the next step is to cancel out the square root sign. And we do that by squaring it. And when we square, we get to this equation. And then next, we just want to distribute everything. Okay, so after you've distributed everything, the next thing you want to do is then distribute the 9 to these two equations. And once you've done that, you can move all the numbers on this side to this side to make this side equal 0, so you do that by subtracting everything. So then once you get that, you get to this equation, and then we want to make it so it's the um, more smaller numbers that are also equal. So then you should divide it all by negative 2 because it all has, once all the numbers have been combined, they're all um, capable of being divided by negative 2. And once you get to that, you get this equation. And from this equation, we can know that it's a circle because the a and c have um, equal signs and both their coefficients are the same number. So we know that it is a circle. And now we have completed the sixth test and we have defeated Mr. Evil Equation.